These spiritual beings have never left our planet, not just in a figurative sense, but in a very literal sense. They have been ruling this planet through very specific bloodlines who long ago swore allegiance to these beings in exchange for wealth and power over the human race. This Satan granted in exchange for their cooperation in preparing the whole world for the ultimate spiritual deception these evil entities have planned. These bloodlines are literally able to be traced by genealogists all the way back to ancient Sumer and Babylonia and these human familiars or pets of the demonic angels have worshipped Satan and his minions under many forms from the time of Sumer right up to our present day. Most religions now are buying the oaths for a dead horse. We feel that uh, all religions are coming around to Satanism. We're in the uh, very throes of a new satanic age. The evidence is all around us. All we have to do is... Look. Many things in this journey um, through the last uh, 13 years have blown my mind um, and there's more to come. But grasping the fact that people were involved in human sacrifice ceremonies and stuff back in the ancient world, okay, get my head around that. The fact even that some really kind of um, imbalanced people could be doing it today, yep, get my head around that. What I really hit me was the scale at which this goes on and some of the most famous people on this planet are involved in it. Those who came down from above were often simply the bird people or the bird gods. Indeed, Jesus himself made this connection in the parable of the sower when he said, the fowls of the air are Satan, who, when a person hears the gospel immediately comes and snatches away the seeds sown in their heart. Birds are therefore very symbolic of these fallen wicked spirits and to a lesser extent they have also been symbolically represented by the goat, serpent, dragon and bull throughout much of human history. To this day these bloodlines worship the ancient Sumerian and pagan gods, which are really nothing more than symbolized representations of Satan himself. Indeed, the great men and the mighty men of the earth worship and serve these fallen angels. And since these beings were physically removed by God, these same bloodlines, in servitude to their hidden masters, have been ruling in their place until they have prepared the way for the return of these Anunnaki, these Nephilim, by herding the human race into a one-world political and religious system totally controlled by these satanic forces, causing all, free and bond, rich and poor, uh, to serve Satan's tyrannical government and to be under Satan's tyrannical control. Oh, 
They had hanging out of the trees. There was lots of smacking on lips of in, in bizarre enjoyment by the crowd. We still haven't made out exactly what was going on, but that a real sacrifice may have actually been developing, according to some occult experts. Now a question. What have Herbert Hoover, Art Linkletter, Jack London, and Richard Nixon all had in common? Well, they've all been members of the exclusive all-male Bohemian Club in California where every year at this time, the elite from around the country get together for two and a half weeks of uh, fun and games. dozens of small camps, the most prominent of which is called Mandalay. Among its members are businessmen like Leonard Firestone and Edgar Kaiser, and political figures like Gerald Ford, Henry Kissinger, William Prince Smith, and George Shultz. President Reagan, Vice President Bush, and Defense Secretary Weinberger are members of other camps. Richard Nixon is a bohemian, and so are high-ranking executives of such companies as Eastern Airlines, Standard Oil of Indiana, and Bank of America. before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order, a world jungle governs the conduct of nations. When we are successful, and we will be, we have a real chance at this new world order, an order in which a credible United Nations can use its peacekeeping role to fulfill the promise and vision of the UN's founders. What is at stake is more than one small country. It is a big idea, a new world order. Scripture makes it plain that the agenda of these great men and of these familiar bloodlines is to lead men and women away from serving and worshiping God and bring them into a one world unity of government and religion for the purpose of preparing the human race to worship and serve Satan in rebellion against God knowingly or unknowingly by the mass population agenda they are carrying out for their hidden masters and they also have a fiendish idea to weed out those who are with them and those who are not Finally from us this evening, technology on the cutting edge. We were interested today to hear that more than 100 law enforcement officials in Mexico are having microchips implanted in their arms. The chips allow a person to be scanned.